Me? Yes. Good night. Good night. Hey, everybody. Yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, I see you've got a great fitted polo shirt on today. Mm-hmm. You got the, two. You got two buttons unbuttoned. You got one still button. Oh, Do no. everyone a favor. Oh, Do no. everyone a favor. <laughs> button that one. No, right wrong there. way. Yuck. Wrong way. Take it, <laughs> Chris. Come on, loosen up. No, no, no. Come on. This is uh, for this Patreon. Is, this is all. You, yeah, that's that's right. You got to pay your two bucks like everyone else <laughs> to see that <laughs> bottom button. A cheap, a cheap, cheap date. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jason. Um, Happy to be here. Happy to chat uh, with my uh, my my digital friend, my digital buddy, award-winning PPC manager to the stars, Jason Rothman. Um, it's a great day to talk about Google Ads, Jason. The uh, the snows are letting up a bit here in Texas. That's not true at all. It never snows, but it's. It's it's sunny. It's beautiful outside. Uh, so the best place that I can be is inside, staring at a TV, uh, a computer screen. So I'm glad to be here. Glad to talk about about those campaign, those trouble campaigns. Because I, I think we got to really, you know, that's what everybody wants to talk about. Talk about how to fix your problems. That's what we're here to talk about. How to how to fix your AdWords problems. But before we get into your problems, let's talk about the software that's designed to help you fix your problems faster. I'm talking about Optio, optio.com slash PSP. You can get a six week extended trial to try out this online tool that's designed to help you achieve more in Google ads faster. So here's the way it works. It, it, it's not a separate network. It's not anything that's confusing. It's, just, it's essentially a software that connects to your Google ads. You simply uh, log in to your Google ads through the system and all of your information is downloaded. It's like a live dashboard so you can see what's happening. And here's the trick. Here's why it's so beloved by our listeners and so many people check it out is because the system doesn't just show you numbers. The system has a super genius behind it that gives you suggestions, points to things that are wrong. Hey, this ad copy is really underperforming. Hey, you should add this keyword because uh, this or that, or this bid could really be improved. All these things do not make themselves immediately known in Google Ads, the standard interface. You need Optio to be able to see that. So that's optio.com slash PSP. That's opteo.com slash PSP. Go to the URL, pop the little chat up there and say, hey, can I get a six-week extended trial? Because the guys at the Paid Search Podcast told me about your awesome software. So go check them out. We thank them for their sponsorship. Thanks, Chris. And I want to tell everyone about our friends at Directive Consulting and a new teaching training platform they've created called Institute. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the results that Directive Consulting can get, and then we'll tell you how you can get those results as well. So let me tell you about Active PDF. Active PDF is the leading global provider of server-side PDF automation and digital transformation tools. Using Active PDF gives teams the ability to create, convert, modify, view, extract, and automate data to and from PDF files within software applications. One of Active PDF's largest drivers of new business is through leads generated from product trial signups. One of the significant challenges faced was the quality of users signing up, which drove up the cost of the product trials. I think we've all been there. You're getting conversions, you're getting signups, but the quality isn't as high as you want it to be. And you got to get those people into actual customers. So you need higher quality signups. To overcome the obstacles of off target lead generation and the larger cost of product trials, the directive team concentrated on centralizing high intent keywords that would resonate with users and condensed online forms for an optimized visitor experience. Directive supported Active PDF in driving one of their most successful quarters in terms of growth with a 296% increase in trials from 324 trials to 1,283 trials 
and a 238% increase in conversion rate, 1.91% to 6.44%. And if you want to learn exactly how Directive drives these types of results for their clients, you need to check out their digital marketing course called Institute. They teach you step-by-step, click-by-click, all the necessary skills required to launch your own successful digital marketing campaigns. Sign up today at directiveconsulting.com slash institute, and you will get four lessons free of charge. Once again, that's directiveconsulting.com slash institute to get four free lessons from the pros. You guys can go there right now. The links are in the description, both to directiveconsulting.com slash institute and also our free trial page for Optio. Go there now, get a free trial to Optio, get your four free lessons at Directives Institute and start improving your digital marketing skills today. So Chris, I feel like we've really tailored in the business here of doing the paid search podcast the last couple of weeks because we've been forced to, because there's going to be some exciting things that happen and we got to be very efficient. And I just feel like we haven't talked a lot this week, you know? No. So I just want to check no. in wellness check on you. How are you doing? Every, everything good? Everything's still rolling? Um, Is it all a blur? Um, kids are healthy. My wife Good. is healthy. How are you? Are you I'm healthy? healthy? I'm healthy. Oh, I'm amazing. Never, no one's ever been more healthy. Than <laughs> wow. me. M- most healthiest. Amazing. Um, yeah. Um, uh, benching more, uh, <laughs> squatting more than I've ever in my life. Uh, um, cleaning. I, I did some amazing heavy cleans today. Some jerking. Uh, that's, that's a move. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's called a push jerk. That's completely different. <laughs> the question um, is, can cause I've been running, Chris, I've been running more. Uh-huh. Can you, can you run more than like 30 seconds? Like if I was running after I, you, if no, I was chasing you, I am, I, do I ever mention how far I run? No, I don't because I'm a horrible runner. <laughs> I hate running. Like the other day I was running. Um, and my wife who works out with me at the, at CrossFit looked at me and she's like, why do you look like you're dying? Like what's wrong with you? I was like, I, I am dying. We had only been running like 800 meter sprints and stuff in our, our runs. But um, yeah, it was, no, you could probably beat me on running, Jason. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty, pretty awful. What, what about you? Family? Uh, Things family are open? good. Things are good. Yeah. Things are great over here. Things are good. Um, just Everything's been... still the same. No big changes. No big news. No, maybe in a few weeks. So, Okay. Chris, we get a lot of five-star reviews. I, I plead with our audience for five-star reviews. Like they're the way you move up in Apple podcasts. And some people write us in and they're like, I'm not an Apple person. I do windows. I do Android, whatever. And I don't know how to leave an Apple podcast review for you. Cause I don't have that platform. And I write them back. It's very simple. Chris go to usually the mall, go to the Apple store, buy an Apple computer, whatever. (laughs) Download the Apple podcast app, leave us a review. And that's all you have to do. What is so hard about that? I don't understand why they ask. But Chris, this one comes from Enjo. And I apologize if I'm saying that wrong from Romania. Oh, beautiful place. I actually have vacation there twice now. Uh, One time was a kind of a business trip. um, And then we liked it so much we went back. So I love, love Romania. So five-star specific, directly applicable, helpful advices. Very helpful content based on experience and not on books. Chris, we were talking before the show. We have some very interesting episode ideas coming up that are based on Mm. real experiences in Google Ads. So we're going to be excited to launch those. The ideas, advices are, I love that word, advices. Advices Advices. are are very specific and directly applicable. Chris and Jason helped me improve my freelancing business. The fact that they are funny is a nice extra, makes the podcast even more enjoyable. Well, uh, thank you very much for that review. And Chris, you know, we've helped a lot of people. Every mm-hmm. now and then I think about who's helping me, who's, who's taking care of number one. And, and then those little <laughs> selfish thoughts, I guess they go away. But yeah. uh, every now and yeah. then I'm like, hey, 
I hear that a lot. And how about, you know, send in, send a little, little percent my way. How about that? You know, like the mafia, <laughs> like kick it up, you know? Well, we'll keep the, we'll keep the, the tips coming. We'll protect you from the bad tips when yeah. you pay your due. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We've heard there's a lot of crime <laughs> in the neighborhood lately. <laughs> We don't want your we don't want your campaign to get hurt or nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I'm happy for everybody, and um, yeah, I hope everybody makes a lot of money. So, Chris, let's talk about this topic today. Why did your campaign results change right off the bat? This was a very cool episode idea you had, but right off the bat, I have a little bone to pick with you, like. No one in the history of the world has ever said, why did my Google ads results change? Or why did my Google ads results get better? It's always, <laughs> What's it's wrong? always, why did things start sucking? Yeah. And sometimes that's an accurate claim, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes a lot of people just make up memories in their head and they look back, they think back to a year ago and they go, things were a lot better a year ago and they're not mm -hmm. now. And why did it change? Mm -hmm. So even if it's not accurate, it's always in a negative context. So how often are you having to think about this question yourself or hearing it from clients? How big of a problem is it? Um, how often do you find yourself just instead of doing what you should be doing, optimizing the campaign, looking for ways to grow, looking for great click to rate ad copy, looking for new keywords that people aren't targeting as heavily, getting those cheap, very valuable clicks. Instead of doing that, how often do you find yourself looking back a year ago compared to the last 30 days, doing the comparisons, trying to figure out, quote, what changed, maybe nothing even did. How often are you looking back instead of looking forward? Oh, that sounds like a loaded question. You but, like that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> like how you implied that I'm already doing something and wrong. I'm not, That's nice. <laughs> I'm not a... Uh, <laughs> I've got things to ask you about your, your dating life when you were in high school. Cause I, in terms of looking back and not looking forward, because uh, I, uh -huh. I don't know where I saw it this week, but some guy got dumped on a TV. Oh, it was in the Sopranos. AJ got dumped uh, oh, in his early twenties. Wow. And um, I was like, man, I had some friends in high school who were dating older girls and they got dumped and Chris, it ruined them for years. Yeah. They were ruined. So I know you had four relationships in high school uh, that you tell us about, I think all were with older women. Um, were you dumped? And then how did you move on? This is, this is absolutely not. Are important. you, are you, are you refusing gonna... to answer the question right now on a podcast? I'm not going to answer that. No. All right, how often are I'm... you? All right. All right. Let's talk about Google ads and click your and quality score and ad rank and ooh, automated strategies. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. All right, Chris, how, how often are you looking back instead of looking forward in Google ads accounts? Seriously. Cause I, 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 you could ask me the question. It's not in a negative context. Cause I have to look back all the time. Cause I get those questions. Too. Yeah. And, and also well, I it's... think to myself, Hey, things might've changed. So looking back, how often do you look back? It's, it's not really something that I do um, every time. And honestly, when it comes down to it, it's uh, something that is initiated by a question. I, and I, 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 I think I've said this many times before. Some of the best Google ads uh, investigations, uh, decisions, uh, changes happen because there's a good question asked. Um, and, uh, what I often refer to as a red flag. So for example, um, you might see something that says, uh, this, this is what a red flag would look and it would warrant a reason to look back. So for example, you have a absolute top percentage of 75% yet your search impression share is 30. Okay. That is is a red flag because you're obviously that's overbidding. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the problem is you're overbidding. So it would, it would require some investigating because you need to go back and figure out have, have, have competitors dropped out? Uh, have my quality scores gotten better? Has my search impression share gone down? Has my position at first position gone up? you know, the percentage at top position, has it gone up? All these questions would require you to go back and find out what changed, what caused this change. What, and that's usually when it happens is when I find a red flag, inconsistencies 
in the campaign that are not normal. So it is always in a negative context in the sense that like anytime we look back and try to figure out what we were doing different, it's always because either the client or we think there's something we got to, something's going a little off and we've got to improve the situation and either get it back to where it was or try to try to see if it was better in the past. And we don't even know if it was better, but we at least take a look. Yeah. And, okay. and uh, you know, a big thing, you, you said it at the beginning, a big reason that you always end up going back and looking is because um, the client will have questions or have concerns about the quality of leads, the number of phone calls, how many clicks they're getting, how many signups they're getting, stuff like that. So that's why I often think that having a manager can be a great asset because it removes um, the mixing between two very defined jobs. The business owner, manager uh, of the business needs to focus on what's happening in the business world with, with their business, you know, the, the bottom line, you know, are we losing money or making money and how many leads are we getting? How many calls are we getting? How much product are we selling? Um, then the Google ads world, it's a very different question. So sometimes those look backs and why your campaign results changed and your reason to go back and look at them is because your boss, your manager, your client pushes those questions on you and, and, and forces you to say, he's right. We we're getting about, you know, twice as much cost per conversion as we were six months ago, you know, what's happened. So that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, how, you know, how, how can you investigate that? What's the best way to investigate it? Yeah. And I've never, I've never thought about it uh, to this extent, like categorizing the ability to look back as its own skill set. But now that we're talking about it and thinking about it, um, the ability to coolly and calmly and objectively uh, look back before you start making a bunch of crazy changes based on hunches or based on things going bad. Things could be going awful, but instead of just making a bunch of changes and not thinking about it, the ability to take a minute, pause, look back, and have actual have an actual skill set at knowing what to look back for and knowing how to compare things. Um, I re- whether it's you're an advertiser yourself or uh, someone you're hiring, that's a huge. Um, huge skill set because um if if you don't know what to look for how to do it um yeah. and you just start making changes and you don't take the time to appreciate what was happening when you like the results better um you can really mess things up so chris we're gonna um at the end of the show we're gonna talk about kind of our own spin on it what we what we each do when it's time to look back and compare and try to figure out how to get a campaign back to the way it was um, First, let me throw this out because as I told you last week, I'm on this kick about coming up with tools for Google ads that we could all use that everyone would love that I bet they could make. And uh, no, I'm not asking for uh, $2 billion. No, I'm not asking for stock options worth 1% of Alphabet. I'm just giving it away for free. But I could give (laughs) so many good ideas for the Google ads platform. And one of them, Chris, Mm -hmm is called the time machine button and what you could do oh yeah oh yeah do you want to worship at my feet or do you want to wash my feet or do you just want to stand there like someone (laughs) who's got a dumb look on their face and is really glad they picked the best podcast co-host in the planet (laughs) chris how great is this idea you look back you look back at your data say june 2018 and you're like man we were crushing it then and Everything we've done since, it's not working. I don't even care about all these changes I've made. I've made a a million changes. I just want to get back to there. So you punch in the time machine, take me back to June 18, June 2018. You click a button, like two minutes later, it cycles through, and then boom, it it puts you in the exact same spot you were in June 2018. And maybe once a week, Google Ads takes a snapshot of your campaigns, and they or once a month or something like that. And they don't have to memorize exactly where the campaigns and all the settings and everything were for every minute of every day, but they only do it like maybe once a month or once a week. And then you have an option to click back there and then they erase it after like a year and you can't go back farther than a year. But wouldn't that be cool? Oh man. Yeah. And I hear our super smart 
patrons yelling because they're they're the guys that are uh, impress me every day i hear them yelling in the background saying well jason you can use google ads editor to download snapshots on on a regular basis of your campaigns and then just re-upload them but it's not the i same. have I have a yeah it's not the same and and the amount of discipline that it would take to do that on a regular basis um, and the balls I to think, get a spreadsheet and then just click yeah. upload and then say, oh, that's my campaign now. With, <laughs> and it. you know, you know, there's errors when you yeah. upload and things change yeah. with different types of spreadsheets and formatting. It, yeah, I, 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 I think there is absolutely something to be said about being able the to time go machine. back because that's, yeah, that's, I like that. That's genius. Yeah. Anyway, so tell me the, about this uh, sexy new tool. Is that where you're getting at? There, yeah, there is a, there is a dream tool. Well, We'll decide if it's a dream or not, but uh, there is a tool out there that I found. Um, I haven't, I, it's not like it was a hidden buried Christopher, treasure. I Chris just... Schaefer Columbus over there, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yeah. I found this tool. I found you opened this. up your platform like the rest of us. You, we put on our pants the same, Chris. Come on. Oh, hi, well, come on. There. Come on. You know that you didn't pay as much attention until I brought it to your attention. So it's called the explanations tool. And the thing about this tool is it's, it's very subtle. It's hidden unless you follow the prescription to get to it. So most tools are, you know, you go to the, the, the tools drop down or there's a button somewhere. This is completely hidden. What you have to do is you go to uh, last seven days, the, the, the time frame window up at the top right, yep. go to last seven days and then scroll to the bottom of that little pop up there. And at the bottom, there is a little uh, toggle switch that you just hit compare. Or last okay. 30 days or whatever, any time. Last, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So the key is true. hitting Thank compare. Doesn't have to, the, heat, the key is hitting compare. And that's not what I'm talking about. Everybody's seen that compare button. It's even more hidden than that. <laughs> what if we and did a show? Like, what if we came out swinging? Yeah. Like, you can compare <laughs> your data. <laughs> <laughs> a whole show about guys did you know you can compare that's Chris, we've Chris, literally never talked half, about that Chris, but... half the audience writes in that is so cool i didn't know that <laughs> i've been doing i've been doing these kind of campaigns i i know there's some people out there listening that don't know about the compare i've been downloading spreadsheets every week and doing that manually <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah side note you you can think you can write a five star review for us if you did not know there's a compare yeah. button. So <laughs> you're welcome. So there's a compare button, which I literally don't think we've ever mentioned. We never on talked the show, about it, yeah. So. so maybe they don't know. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Those people didn't know. Tell us about it. Send us an email, paidsearchpodcast.com. Um, so you click on the compare button. Now you hit apply. And there's all these crazy amount of numbers all over the screen, right? It's going to be way more complex up, you know, negative, positive percentages, all this kind of stuff. Ignore that. What you're looking for is the, the, the number that has a highlight, a green highlight. It's a hyperlink. Okay. Once you see that hyperlink, now you have stumbled in the comparison tool. Uh, sorry, I just said the wrong, the explanation tool. So yeah. this explanation tool is not always going to be available. Like I just, Jason, I just have a random account pulled up. Um, I did last 30 days. I did, I did compare previous period and then apply. And it's, it's not here. Okay. Hmm. So first of all, if you hear us describe it and you don't see it, just know that this is still very much a beta product. You may not see it or you may see it uh, on your account. We have no way to turn it on. Um, and we don't have any information about, you know, what could help you get, get it versus other ways. I mean, we're testing it just as much as you guys and it's relatively yeah. new, but let's talk about what it does. So for those of you that do see it, um, this explanation tool has this little scientist looking guy on there and he's, he's going to do some calculations for us. And essentially what it does, it's a glorified, it, to, to say it in the most negative aspect, it's a glorified change history tool. Okay. Um, but there are some additional uh, metrics that it can pull in that would not be available in uh, any, any other uh, way. You would have no other way of, uh, of seeing this. So here's very briefly a quick list of some of the explanations that you could see on this tool. And then we'll talk about why it's valuable and how we use it. So you can see that you've made campaign settings, bid adjustments, negative keywords that you've added, 
uh, search interest, um, auction activity, uh, status changes, things pausing, enabling, uh, budgets uh, changing, uh, and targeting changes, all this kind of stuff. So that's, that's a very short list. All that doesn't really make a lot of difference. And one thing was buried in there, Jason, that I'll pull your attention to that I don't see very often, but I love. Mm. It's the search interest. It's essentially a metric that will tell us how much interest goes up or down on certain things. So suddenly you're not spending as much money. Uh, you're not getting as many impressions. And let's say your bid adjustments, there's no bid adjustments or nothing like that, but you see a search history change, or sorry, a search interest uh, change. So essentially what it's telling us is there's a lot more people um, that are doing this search now or a lot less people that are doing it now than were before. Um, I don't see it very often, but I think that that alone is a very unique uh, metric that you can't see anywhere else, uh, the search interest um, measurement. So I think that's really cool. And the rest of it, you know, is, is very practical. Um, mm -hmm. Jason, how do you... You know, what, what do you think about the tool? How do you use it? Do, do you find it to be very valuable? What do you think? Well, my, my thoughts are they're actually changing as I'm playing around with it right now because it's so new and I've used it, you know, so this is like every time I use it, my usage rate goes up another like 30% because it's very new. So I am seeing some different things. So the first things I'm noticing are when you do your comparison and then the little blue shows up on your columns, the columns I have up the everyday columns, clicks, impressions, click to rate, cost. Um, I'm not seeing it available on cost per click, at least for my campaigns. I'm not seeing it on click to rate. I'm seeing it on impressions sometimes and clicks sometimes and right. cost sometimes. Um, I think I wrote in there, I'm seeing it at the campaign and ad group level, not at keywords. And that's just what I'm seeing. Maybe, maybe it'll be different by the time people are looking at this, but what I, what I'm, what's cool is the change history thing that came from me. I was like, isn't this just change history kind of repackaged, but you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, Chris, it's, it's obviously a little better than that because it, it selects the changes that you made specifically that would cause this data to change. It doesn't show you all your change history. It just shows you mm -hmm. the changes that would cause this. So for example, some cool things you can do here. I've got a campaign uh, last 30 days versus previous um, impressions are up 13% and some, some examples of why, why they're, they're telling me this is look at, they're saying like, look at your impressions for keywords that did not change. And then impressions keywords that changed. Well, guess what I did, Chris, in the last few days, I added in broad keywords. So a very small sliver of my key, the column there is blue and it says changed keywords. So it actually like picks out the broad keywords that I added and it tells me, Hey, these are probably the ones driving the, the change in impressions, which is pretty cool. And then it reminded me that I removed some negative keywords from the campaign yep. and that would yep. cause impressions to go up. That's something that was not on my, not on my brain just now wondering why impressions yep. went up. So that was cool. And then this one's just awesome. It, it looks back at the last 30 days and it tells you when you were eligible to receive traffic. Last 30, 30 days, solid blue bar. Every single day we were running ineligible. But then the previous 30 day set, guess what? There's one little gray sliver there and it says ineligible on December 31st. Because guess what we did? We paused the campaigns for New Year's Eve. So it shows you that, uh, hey, you're looking back uh, at 30 days compared to 30 days. But in that first 30 day segment, you only ran for 29 days. So that's why your impression. So when, when someone wants to ask, why are things up? Why are things different? Not every section here is going to tell you the answer, but just reviewing this and all the different things are throwing at you. It's pretty cool because you can, you can find out the one or two things that really is probably causing the difference. Um, now, is it going to solve why were my campaigns better a year ago? Why was my cost per conversion 50% less than it is now? I don't think it's going to be able to solve that just by looking at it. And that's still going to take some experience and skill set, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. 
but in terms of just knocking stuff out, um, trying to get a good grasp of what happened in that campaign, I think it's, I think it's amazing. Um, and I think it's extremely valuable and I think it's a huge addition to the platform. Yeah. I, you, I think you said it there is what has struck me the most is it puts back into your mind things that you uh, did Mm -hmm. that you don't equate to something that can change your campaign, like the negative keyword, Um, like that slight um, device bid adjustment um, that you did. Little things like that. Um, For me, you know, swapping over to the side as a campaign manager of, of multiple companies, it helps me because clients will say, why, why are we down 30 days? And then I'll, I'll, I'll use this tool. You know, why are we down this month versus last month? And I'll use this tool and it'll remind me, oh yeah, yeah, you told me last month to take off 16 of your geo targets. Remember that? Right. You know, I, I told you not to do it. And, th- and this, then by the way, like a, maybe it'll show you this, this 15 of the geos caused a 1% drop, but this one geo caused a 25% drop and that's where all your drop came from. And Hey client, if we add this one back in the vault, so it'll give you insights like that, I think, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I found. Um, So there's a whole side of this that I think we're getting towards here is that, you know, what, why did your campaign results change? Sometimes it's because of what you did. Sometimes it's a direct result of these little tweaks, removing this negative keyword, adding this negative keyword, this adjustment to your your geographic targeting, to your device bids, pausing this keyword, increasing these bids, lowering these bids. All these things can can really pile up. And this is a great tool to remind you, hey, dummy, it changed because you changed. But Chris, (laughs) you you. you know what's even cooler? Sometimes it's nothing you did. And sometimes we've both had this hunch as Google ads managers, the search interest in a keyword category dropped for whatever reason. Maybe it was the holiday season and people weren't as interested in suing each other. Maybe it was the holiday season and people weren't as interested in dropping divorce papers on their spouse's bedside table when they have little kids and that's gonna screw up their kids. (laughs) For the next Gosh, Jason, 30 years. The campaigns because, you manage are so cheery. <laughs> Chris, I'm just saying, you both, you and you and I have both seen this. The business, this is just one example, but the business activity kind of stuff during the holiday season, during December, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. During especially Christmas to New Year's. Yeah. It drops just like a lot of businesses close, close early, take days off. The same stuff happens with search. People search less, they're out. Christmas shopping instead of doing searches to to find any kind of uh, business solution. So we both have that hunch. And sometimes it's just for a random reason. It's just down. But now we actually have a piece of data in inside this explanation thing that says, no, it wasn't actually anything you did. It's just look at the search interest for this topic happened to be down this month. Alternatively, hey, why is our, why are we running out of budget on day 20 instead of all the way through the month? Well, the search interest picked back up. And so um, sometimes it's not even something we did. So yeah, really cool tool. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I mean, and, and here's where we have to grind the gears and get down to, you know, this tool helps. Uh, oh, Jason's got to change his diaper. Oh, um, oh no, this, one could, this... no one on audio where the majority of our uh, listeners listen would have heard that because we take our audio separately. But thanks, Chris. Thanks for breaking up the show. Thanks. So, Appreciate that. Here's... You're a real pro, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that's what I'm here for. Um, the, the thing is, this tool is going to give you a lot of ideas. It's going to give you insight. It's going to give you uh, a different spin on things that you wouldn't normally have seen and possibly point to that investigation that you can do um, that would not have otherwise popped into your mind. Because not all of us keep meticulous notes of every single change they made. And if you go into the change history and look, you know, it's a grind to try and figure out what changed, you know, there's like 600 changes here, which one made the difference, you know? So that that's almost a useless tool to try and to try and investigate backwards as to what happened. So the big question is 
you know, Jason, you and I, what metrics do we manually review mm -hmm. to identify what changed in our accounts? And here's where I want to just, you know, I just want to hear from you about mm -hmm. what does it look like um, when you need to identify something, whether it's, well, whether it's good or bad, but we know most of the time what's really going to trigger us to, to go look into something is because something's bad. Mm -hmm. So Chris, it, it, I think this is the part of the show where Michael Jordan tries to teach people how to be great. And it's just like, they're like, yeah. I did what you said, but it's not working. And I'm like, well, I'm Michael Jordan. So <laughs> <laughs> like, of course it's not going to work. By for the you. way, did you, did you see the, did you see the, uh, the clip of him crying again? Um, at no, the, I, I haven't funeral. watched that funeral thing yet. Oh, oh, he, he starts crying again and he's, he's just here. I mean, it's emotional, very emotional, but he, he makes it, he's like, now I'm going to have to see memes of myself, you know, for the next <laughs> two years crying. He was so, he was so upset that he had to <laughs> be on camera crying again. I wonder <laughs> where, where he him. was the first time he cried out, but I guess it was this, I wonder I if it was this hall of fame speech I, or I don't remember. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Chris, so my point is that, I manage campaigns so clean, so good, so disciplined that it's very easy for me to look back and see what was different. And I think like one of the biggest things we've preached is simplicity and um, mm -hmm. being able to be aware of the changes you're making and know what you're doing. And as opposed to just getting in there and I've seen some of the things people do, it's just crazy the the multitude of uh, different kinds of changes they make. Uh, an example would be you got keyword bids and you're bidding on tons of different keywords and you're just changing them every single day and uh, for months and months. And then you're trying to figure out what happened going back. And it's like, how am I supposed to figure that out? Versus you have keywords grouped very tightly into nice themes, nice themes, and you're just making ad group bids and it's just a lot cleaner. So that's just yeah. one example, but really I'm only looking at four things. There's only four things I look at that explain a difference in data. Number one, settings. If you turn off different locations, turn off different schedules, uh, changes of bidding types, uh, changes in targeting networks, partners, search partners, search, display network, all that kind of stuff. That really, th those are such big changes, the settings changes, that it can explain a lot. Um, search term quality. One thing I like to do is I like to go back to the quote unquote good month where we had good results, go to my search terms, sort my search terms by conversions, download mm. that table, get rid of every search term that didn't get a conversion and just look through the search terms that actually had conversions and go, okay, good means we were getting leads. What search terms were producing our leads? Let's make sure we're targeting those again. Um, I mean, you don't seem too enthused by that because it's so simple, but come on, give it up. Isn't that no. a very simple, effective oh, yeah. process? Don't you love that? Oh yeah, no. I, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the dry part. I mean, the exciting part was telling everybody about the explanations tool because everybody loves tools. Everybody loves, you know, shortcuts, New, yeah. you know, flashy, flashy things that they can click and the little graphic pops up and tells you the reason why. This part isn't exciting because that's the, you're exactly right. When it comes down to it, settings, search term quality. But that's why positions. people love this show because we actually give effective information, even if we can't juice up a webinar or a product off of it and yeah, sell it for thousands true. of dollars. Like, no, it's, it's very it's simple. Not, what was producing yeah. leads or sales if mm -hmm. you're e-commerce? Look at those search terms. Are you showing up and getting traffic from those search terms today to the same extent? And you're probably not if conversions drop. So that's just a very effective thing I've found is just looking at what search terms drove conversions. And then the final thing when it comes to the cost of those conversions, assuming the search terms are the same, if the cost is the issue, to me, Chris, it comes down to bids, or excuse me, the cost per click and the position. So I'm just looking at three columns. I'm looking at absolute top impression share. I'm looking at top impression share. And I'm looking at the cost per click. And just to give you an example, this is like called the Google ads curse. When you launch a client, you get amazing results for whatever reason. It's just the way the market was set up. And then a year and a half later, other people came into the market that the bidding totally changed. Everything's changed. 
and they're yeah. always chasing that dragon of the first few months and they're like hey i was getting 30 leads a month now i'm getting two and i'm spending the same budget or five what's going on like get me back to that month and so i was doing that this week and i was trying to see how can we get them back to this month so looked at the search terms same search terms that were producing leads back then but chris our absolute top position impression share was 99 percent back then like people were searching they were clicking on our ad and we were getting the market share 99 percent and then now it's at 50 percent so you would think well that means cost per click mm. must be a lot lower because your positions went down and maybe that means you're getting a lower cost no because our our cost per click went up 150 <laughs> percent so our positions went from 99 percent yeah. absolute top to 50 percent absolute top drop dropped men tremendously and at the same time our cost per click went up 150 percent and so what happened got was it was less per penny you spent way less way less and the, yeah. the only reason this happened is because whatever reason a ton of competitors were not advertising in this space uh, mm -hmm. earlier uh, last year. Yeah, I think it was last year or this year. I can't remember, but a, a while ago. For whatever reason, they just either weren't bidding a lot or they weren't even advertising. And then they all came into the market and the cost went up tremendously. <laughs> and we're all giving each other high fives at Google, like the cost per click is up on this market share. <laughs> like Google's happy. It's fine. Like yeah. <laughs> more people are advertising on this, this keyword group. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like they're willing to pay that. Um, yeah. A bunch of advertisers are, but my advertisers not for whatever reason. And he's never going to get back to that golden era. Yeah. And so all this stuff about changes and all that kind of stuff, guess what? Never going to happen. Like it, we're never going to get yeah. back there. And that's what I found from my, from my review. And sometimes that's the answer. So Chris, that's what I'm doing manually. What are you doing manually when you have to look back and see what was going on? Yeah. I mean, anything I, different. I, so, so yeah, rather than just repeating what you said, cause I absolutely agree. And it comes down to it. It's the core of what you're bringing in and where you are on Google. <clears throat> so to go a, a bit beyond that, uh, things that I always pull my eyes towards is uh, things like uh, impression share. You know, um, impression share is a great number and not because I you always impression want to make just sure. Impression share on its own, not position? Just impression share. Yeah. Just impression just, share. Just, just, just impression share. I want to look okay. at it. Well, hang on. I'm getting there. So impression if i if i look at impression share it's not because i say i was at 90 before and now i'm at 50 that's not necessarily a bad thing what i like about impression share is it tells me um it's a result of the management of the campaign right so let's say over time uh, i started with uh, uh broad non-specific modified broad keywords right that was month one and now we're on month 10 and I have phrase in exact um, and I have built the campaign very specific. I have very targeted traffic, but I'm not doing as well. So when I look mm. at the search impression share, I went from a 30% um, search impression share on month one, all the way up to a 90% search impression share. So you think that's a good thing, but my results have gone down. So what it essentially tells me is, it's really hard to see that if you look at the keywords, because the keywords will not be so defined that way. But if you look at the search impression share, you'll see, wow, we improved our search impression share 200%, 300%. You know, it's gone up from 30% up to 95%. So what I could, what red flag that might tell me is, you know, maybe I'm a bit too presumptuous about what keywords people are searching that they should, should should search for this conversion. And my conversions have gone down because my precision and my targeting has gotten so strict, I leave no room for error. You know, I have so you so shrunk, many you shrunk the market for yourself right. is what you're saying. Right, right. And, and it's impossible to see that any other way, all right? Try and pull up a, a full list of, you know, keywords and look at all your deleted ones and all your removed ones and paused ones and try and, you know, get heads or tails out of all that while looking at the past 10 months of data. No, but I can sure look at a comparison, you know, past six months compared to the other pr previous six months. And I can see, wow, search impression shares changed a lot. Why would that happen? 
Mm. It's be- happened because the way I've been really locking down on that. So sometimes maybe a campaign would actually do better when I let up a bit, you know, <laughs> I let a little bit of uh, looseness come into the campaign, allow for a little bit of um, broad keywords to get a little more testing. Dude, you on wanna, words. I mean, this week I've got one of my best clients and what, for whatever reason, I just had the urge to test broad keywords again. And boy, yeah. am I glad I tested it. We, we talked them. about it. We talked about it recently. Yeah. Yeah. On the podcast. It, it's, yeah. it's working. So, um, yeah, every time, every now and then it's time to just loosen things up and see what you get. I'm, and I think I, search impression share is a good kind of cue for that. Like, oh, if I'm at 99%, yeah. it's like, well, am I really at 99% or is there something else I could be, yeah. could be well, uh, there, targeting here? I have, I have a perfect example. I have a client who works in a very specific field that provides a service to professionals. So it's a B2B. Of course, it's B2B. I'm the B2B king. Uh, so it's a B2B company. And um, what, they, what they're trying to do, they've been doing moderately well for a while. And I come in, gangbusters, you know, just like guns blaring. I'm like, I'm going to freaking fix all this. You know, so I start throwing precise targeting keywords and exact match and fr- and then I build this whole new campaign based on what's been converting and I come in and guess what Jason mm. they have an amazingly high search impression share great click through rate but their conversions go to crap i mean just drop and they're like what the heck our cpc goes way up of course because i'm being more precise about what i'm targeting so i can bid more that all makes sense mm. but the conversion rate should go up I should get much better results. Didn't happen. And you know what? I had to just take a step back, take a bite of humble pie and (laughs) think, you know what? Uh, Maybe these broad keywords have some kind of magic to them that I can't necessarily replicate in some Mm. uh, long tail exact match formula. So absolutely. I mean, it absolutely happens. And, you know, so, I mean, that's a long story to explain how, how did your campaign change? What changed? And impression share tells a huge story more than just, you know, a number. So that's, that's one, uh, that's one example there, but that's, um, I mean, in the end, I think if there's one last message, I would say figuring out why your campaign results changed will not be determined in a tool. You won't be able to click a button and see it. You won't be able to just quickly, you know, click a few things here and there and be obvious to you. If you really want to know, it's going to take time, investigation, uh, and 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 real, uh, you know, detective work on Mm. what's different, you know, what's changed. And and sometimes, Chris, my main one of the messages I want to get out is sometimes the market changed on you, and there ain't no going back to what it was before the glory days. And you or your client or whoever, they're either going to have to accept that and look at the overall digital marketing landscape and go, oh, well, yeah, the search cost per clicks are up a bunch because a bunch of people are in the market. Let's open up, a, let's crack open a remarketing campaign. Let's crack open a YouTube placement campaign. Let's let's try some broad keywords and get the cost per click down. Like sometimes just because you want to look back, it doesn't mean you're ever going to be able to uh, actually go back there. No. Yeah. All right, guys. So, since we just, uh, I took, I, I literally just took a crap on tools. Let me tell you about a tool that I do care about that does make a difference. <laughs> optio.com slash PSP. It is really a good tool. Tools have their place and Optio is a great tool. I've talked about it plenty. You guys know it's true. We, I, I, I hear about it on Twitter, on our uh, yeah. Facebook group, um, all over the place. People, people talk about it and it's a great tool, uh, very affordable price, uh, even a great uh, starting affordable price of free for a six week extended trial. Um, just for being a listener of the paid search podcast, go check it out. O P T E O.com slash PSP. Thanks Chris. And I want to thank directive consulting. And I also want to thank them for making their new teaching platform Institute. Go to directive consulting.com slash Institute. You heard about what they did for active PDF. If you want to get over 40, actionable video tutorials. There's an official certification. You can get complete access at directiveconsulting.com institute. And you can sign up for a free 
four lessons right now at directiveconsulting.com institute pp version rate optimization analytics and optimization and there's a bunch of different great way to improve your digital marketing skills directiveconsulting.com slash institute get your four free lessons today jason before before we go um we uh, uh we of course we have a um patreon that we always do and uh sometimes we're going to address some specific things that uh, our general audience would not hear. So I want to mention that we're going to answer a question from Kyle from Cincinnati on the page on the uh, uh, on the Patreon today who had a question about uh, uh, referrals. And if you guys are interested in the business of PPC, the business of Google Ads management, you know, freelancing agency stuff, all kinds of stuff, get the inside story, or you just want to hear Jason yell at me a little bit more, um, two bucks a month for our lowest tier and four for our highest incredibly and affordable you get a discount to our shopify store where you can get old uh episodes and also we have a private paid search podcast patreon facebook group and we talk shop in there we give each other advice yeah. we cool each other off when things happen and mm -hmm. we keep thinking the right way and uh, get lots of uh, great advice in there so thanks for everyone who joins us in there and uh, that's it for now on the paid search podcast we'll be back sooner than you even know on the next time of the Paid Search Podcast.